Good morning. Today we will start with the basics of heat transfer. The science of thermodynamics deals with the amount of heat transfer as a system undergoes a process from one equilibrium state to another and makes no reference to how long the process will take. In the thermodynamics we don't consider the time. We are just concerned with the amount of heat transfer. But in engineering we are often interested in rate of heat transfer which is a topic of science of heat transfer. We start this chapter with a review of fundamental concept of thermodynamics that form the framework of heat transfer. We first present the relation of heat to other forms of energy and review the first law of thermodynamics. We then present the three basic mechanisms of heat transfer that is conduction, convection and radiation. And then we discuss the thermal conductivity. Conduction is a heat transfer from more energetic particles of a substance to the adjacent less energetic ones as a result of interaction between two particles. Convection is the mode of heat transfer between a solid surface and the adjacent liquid or gas that is in motion and involves the combined effect of conduction and fluid motion. Radiation that is third form of heat transfer is energy emitted by matter in the form of electromagnetic waves as a result of change in electronic configuration of atoms and molecules. Thermodynamics and heat transfer. We all know from experience that cold can drink left in a room warms up and a warm can drink left in a refrigerator cools down. This is accomplished by transfer of energy from the warm medium to cold medium. The energy transfer is always from higher temperature to low temperature one. So in this text we are primarily interested in heat which is form of energy that can be transferred from one system to another as a result of temperature difference. The science that deals with the determination of rates of such energy transfer is called heat transfer. So you may be wondering why we need to uh, study on heat transfer. After all we can determine amount of heat transfer from system undergoing any process using a thermodynamics alone. The reason is thermodynamics is concerned with the amount of heat transfer as a system undergoes a process from one equilibrium state to another and it gives no indication how long the process will take. A thermodynamic analysis simply tells us how much amount of heat is transferred. But heat transfer will tell about at what rate heat is transferred. The first law uh, in thermodynamics requires that rate of energy transfer into a system be equal to rate of increase of energy of the system. The second law requires that the heat transfer in a direction of decreasing temperature. You can see here hot coffee heat is transferred to the cool environment. So this is like the same as car parked on inclined road will always go downhill. So it is analogous to electric current flowing in the direction of decreasing voltage. The basic requirement for heat transfer is the presence of temperature difference. There can be no heat transfer between two mediums that are at same temperature. The temperature difference is driving force for heat transfer just as the voltage difference is the driving force for electric current and the pressure difference is the driving force for fluid flow. The rate of heat transfer in a certain direction depends on the magnitude of the temperature gradient in that direction. Engineering heat transfer, heat transfer equipment such as heat exchanger, boiler, condenser, radiator, heater, furnace and refrigerator and solar collectors are designed primarily on the basis of heat transfer analysis. The heat transfer problems encountered in practice can be considered in two groups, rating and sizing. The rating problems deal with the determination of the heat transfer rate for an existing system at a specified temperature difference. The sizing problems deal with the determination of the size of a system in order to transfer heat at a specified rate for a specified temperature difference. So a heat transfer process requirement can be studied either experimentally or analytically. The experimental probe ha has advantage that we deal with the actual physical system and the desired quantity is determined by measurement within the limits of experimental error. But you can see if you have to design a building, you have to find what should be the heat transfer and the size of the heating system for the building. So it is better to go for a different approach. So we will follow an analytical approach that has the advantage that it is a fast and inexpensive, but results obtained are subject to accuracy of the assumption and idealization made analysis. In heat transfer studies, often a good compromise is reached by reducing the choices to just a few analysis and then verifying the findings experimentally. Molding in heat transfer. 
The descriptions of most scientific problems involve expressions that lead the changes in some key variables to each other. One quantity may vary, which vary with another quantity. Usually, the smaller the increment chosen in the changing variables, the more general and accurate the description. In the limiting case of inferential or differential changes in variables, we obtain differential equations that provide precise mathematical formulations for the physical principles and laws by representing the rates of change as derivatives. Therefore, differential equations are used to investigate a wide variety of problems in sciences and engineering, including heat transfer. The study of physical phenomena involves two important steps. In the first step, all variables that affect phenomena are identified, reasonable assumptions and approximations are made, and the interdependence of these variables is studied. The relevant physical laws and principles are invoked, and the problem is formulated mathematically. The equation itself is very instructive as it shows the degree of dependence of some variables on others and the relative importance of various terms. In the second step, the problem is solved using a appropriate approach and the results are interpreted. So many processes that seem to occur in nature randomly or without any order, in fact governed by some feasible or not so feasible laws. Most of these laws are well defined and well understood by scientists. So this makes it possible to predict the course of an event before it actually occurs or to study various aspects of an event mathematically without actually running expensive and time consuming experiments. So this is where the power of analysis lies. Very accurate results to meaningful practical problems can be obtained with relatively limited effort by using a suitable and realistic mathematical model. Energy transfer. Energy can be transferred to or from a given mass by two mechanisms heat and work W. Energy interaction is a heat transfer if it is driving force is a temperature difference, otherwise it is work. A rising piston, a rotating shaft and an electric wire crossing the system boundaries are all associated with the work interactions. Work done per unit time is called power and is denoted by W. The term heat and the associated phrases such as heat flow, heat addition, heat rejection, heat absorption, heat gain, heat loss, heat storage, heat generation, electrical heating, later heat, body heat and heat source are in common use today and the attempt to replace heat in these phrases by thermal energy had only limited success. These phrases are deeply rooted in our vocabulary and they are used by both the ordinary people and the scientists without causing any misunderstanding. For example, the phrase body heat is understood to the mean and the thermal energy contact of the body. Likewise, the heat flow is understood to mean the transfer of thermal energy, not the flow of fluid-like substance called heat. Although the later incorrect interpretation based on the calorie theory is the origin of this phrase, also the transfer of heat into a system is frequently referred to as heat addition and the transfer of heat out of a system as heat rejection. The first law of thermodynamics which is the conservation of energy principle said that energy can neither be created nor destroyed so it can only change forms therefore every bit of energy must be counted the conservation of energy principle for any system undergoing any process may be expressed as follows the net change in the total energy of system during a process is equal to the difference between total energy entering the and total energy leaving a system during that process so total energy entering the system minus total energy leaving the system is equal to change in the total energy of the system. So this is E in minus E out is equal to change in the energy of system. If you divide by temperature that is E dot in minus E dot out that is rate of change of the system. In the absence of significant electrical, magnetic motion, gravity and surface tension effects. The change in the total energy of a system during a process is simply the change in the internal energy that is del E system is equal to del U system. That is the change in energy of system is equal to change in internal energy of the system. In the heat transfer analysis, we are usually interested only in the forms of energy that can be transferred as a result of temperature difference that is heat or thermal energy. In such cases, it is convenient to write a heat balance and to treat the conversation of nuclear, chemical, electrical energies into thermal energy as heat generation. The energy balance in this case is heat in minus heat out plus energy generated is equal to change in the internal thermal total energy of the system. Energy balance for steady flow system. A large number of engineered devices such as water heaters and car radiators involve mass flow 
in and out of system and are modeled as control volumes. Most control volumes are analyzed under steady operating conditions. The term steady means no change with time at a specified location. The opposite of steady is unsteady or transient. Also, the term uniform applies no change with position throughout a surface or region at a specified time. These meanings are consistent with their everyday use. The total energy connect of a control volume during a steady flow process remains constant. That is, the change in the total energy of a control volume during such a process is zero. Thus, the amount of energy entering a control volume in all forms for a steady flow process must equal to the amount of energy leaving it. That is, change in the energy of the control volume is zero. So, take this is the control volume. Under steady conditions, the rate of energy transfer to the fluid in a control volume is equal to the rate of increase in the energy of the fluid stream flowing through the control volume. So, Q is equal to, that is heat transfer is equal to mass flow rate into del H. Now, del H is equal to specific heat into change in temperature while entering temperature is T1, while exit temperature is T2. So, Q dot is the rate of heat transfer into or out of control volume. This is the form of energy balance relation that we will use most often for steady flow systems. Surface energy balance, as mentioned in chapter opener, Heat is transferred by mechanism of conduction, convection and radiation. And heat often changes vehicle as it is transferred from one medium to another. For example, the heat conductor to the outer surface of the wall of a house in winter is convected away by the cold outer air while being radiated to the cold surrounding. In such case, it may be necessary to keep track of energy interactions at the surface and this is done by applying conservation energy principle at the surface. A surface contains no volume or mass and does no energy. Therefore, a surface can be viewed as a fictitious system whose energy connect remains constant during a process just like a steady state or steady flow system. So, surface energy balance is equal to E in minus E out. So, this is wall here. So, if you apply energy balance at this surface because surface has not volume, don't have any volume but we consider this surface then Q in heat in is equal to Q3 plus Q2 that is radiation and convection. So, the energy balance for the outer surface of the wall is Q1 dot is equal to heat transfer to radiation and heat transfer to convection where Q1 is conduction through the wall to the surface and Q2 is convection from the surface to the outdoor air and Q3 dot is a net radiation from the surface to the surrounding. When the directions or attractions are not known or energy interactions can be assumed to be towards the surface and the surface energy balance can be expressed as so, E in is equal to summation of all energy is equal to 0. Note that the interaction in opposite direction will end up having negative values and balance this equation. Heat transfer mechanisms. We define heat as a form of energy that can be transferred from one system to another as a result of temperature difference. The thermodynamic analysis is concerned with the amount of heat transfer as a system undergoes a process from one equilibrium state to another. The science that deals with the determination of the rates of such energy transfer is the heat transfer. The transfer of energy as heat is always from the higher temperature medium to the lower temperature one and the heat transfer stops when the two mediums reach the same temperature. Heat transfer can be in three modes, conduction, convection and radiation. All modes of heat transfer require the existence of temperature difference and all modes are from the high temperature medium to a lower temperature one. So this is up to a about the heat transfer mechanism that is your conduction, convection and radiation. Like this video, subscribe this channel and thank you for watching this video.